Halo 1 was a pretty good game. Not just gameplay-wise, I mean, it was fun. Halo 1 was fun. I think we spent years, frankly, at this point, saying how do we ratchet the bar across the board up for Halo 2. In a lot of ways, Halo 2 is just the, you know, an, an extension of all the excitement we felt at the end of Halo 1 and that we didn't get to, you know, that we didn't get to express. Just in every way, we've really increased the scale and the scope of the game. It's exploring huge environments, 10 times the size of Halo 1. It's about kicking ass in as many ways as possible, in as many different bodies as possible. Halo 2 is about guns and mo guns. <laughs> That's what it's about. There's a lot of the story that we didn't get to tell. Boo. Kill the demon. There are characters that we had conceived of and even in some cases modeled. And it's also the same group of people too. And they all still want to do what they're doing. We want our game to look like a movie. We want it to look like something that's just unbelievable to experience. I guess we're sort of feeding off each other. So it's a, it's a really creative group of people that trust each other. The really important thing to do now is to, to take all these different disciplines who are all working on their own things and take all those pieces, take the AI code and the physics and the guys working on the, on the levels and bring all those pieces together at the same time. And then you keep doing that. You keep colliding things together until, uh, until it's a game. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Keep going, I got your back. No, not you, dude. Dude, get out the window. Hop in, hop in. Grab the sword, get him. Keep it going, keep it going. This process began with the end of Halo and realizing all the stuff that we had left out and Jason and I and Jamie and a few other people sitting down and thinking really hard about, oh, wow, what, what did we really want to tell? And, and then Jason locked himself in a room for a while and organized his core ideas and then came to me and said, hey, you know, these are my, these are my thoughts about a story for Halo 2. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know if we're crazy or stupid or uh, we just like good stories or, or what, but we, we certainly worry about that a lot more than you might think we'd have to in a game that's mostly just about action and, and about not thinking. In Halo 1, there was maybe 30 seconds of fun that happened over and over and over and over again. So if you can get 30 seconds of fun, you can pretty much stretch that out to be an entire game. 
encountering a bunch of guys, melee attacking one of them before they were aware, throwing a grenade into a group of other guys, and then cleaning up the stragglers before they could surround you. And so you can have all the great graphics and all the different characters and lots of different weapons with amazing effects, but if you don't nail that 30 seconds, you're not gonna have a great game. This is the copy of the script, the cinematic script for Halo. This document needs to talk to programmers and artists and animators and everybody. This is 160 pages worth of cinematics. That's kind of crazy if you just think about it on its own. But when you look at a game which is 15 levels long and with a couple protagonists and a fairly complex story arc, I mean, when you need to drive the player's experience for 20 hours of gameplay, say, 120 minutes of cinematics doesn't really seem that out of proportion. But just to look at it prima facie, it's pretty daunting. You think, my God, you're making a feature film. Why was it not destroyed with the rest of their fleet? It fled as we set fire to their planet. But I followed with all the ships in my command. When you first saw Halo, were you blinded by its majesty? It's not about making it complex, and it's not about playing movies for you know, two hours in between every five minutes of gameplay, but the more you can make somebody believe that they're in this cool place, that they're on Halo fighting the Covenant instead of whatever, sitting in their, sitting in their living room at two in the morning trying to you know, finish some stupid video game. I will continue my campaign against the humans. There's a lot of complexity here up in this geometry, but look down now, there's very little of that down here. Oh, right. And I think we should try to flip-flop some of that. We start with the story, first of all. Uh, we, we get a good background to the entire game, just a foundation for things. And then we start building levels off of that. This particular level that I'm looking at right now is called the Sentinel Headquarters. The Sentinel is this hovering character they don't need floors. They, they can fly up through the ceilings. They can fly through portals that are 20 feet up. But you as the character will have the challenge of, of, of traversing this interesting terrain inside the structure up and uh, across beam work and through these uh, little portals through the, throughout the space. So it's going to be really interesting for the player to explore. We made it, huh? Uh, all right, Michael's gonna talk about the uh, engineering and stuff. It's, it's amazing to me how good stuff looks and how much progress we have, but it, something I've been thinking a lot about is E3. E3 uh, stands for the Electronic Entertainment Expo, and it's the biggest event in the video game world where all the developers and all the publishers and all the gaming press all get together for, it's almost a week long, uh, Carnival, practically. Trade shows are useful because they make you get your shit together. It's important for us to get excited about what we get done for E3 because we need to like, build that excitement up and go <laughs> God damn, we have a lot of work to do between now <laughs> and E3. I think, it's, I think it's really important to be ambitious. I think it's important to have more balls in the air that you can catch at the end when it all comes down to it and you have to ship a game. But certainly you can go too far. Of all the people on the team, Tyson and I are probably the people who are the most frightening for Jason and the programmers. We are the most crazy scripting, crack smoking, this would be so cool, damn the frame rate. Let's pound the code and make these crazy things happen. Oh, no. E3 demo from start to finish. Woohoo! <laughs> Yesterday, before the demo, we had all this stuff that we were just throwing in, and finally something began to catch, and we started moving. But all this stuff that didn't exist two hours earlier is all, all of a sudden in the demo and ready to show to people. That's when it's the most rewarding, most fun to be doing this sort of stuff, is when it, it clicks. So you will continue fighting. Uh, I don't think this part of the script is going to work, but at some point, you and your ODST buddies will jump down and. You'll have two SMGs at this point, one in each hand, and you will begin to tear into the grunts with your two SMGs. Going in. Damn straight, 
we're going in. A lot of things that you see at E3 are movies so that they can kind of fake the sound or you know, uh, pre-render it even so that the frame rate is solid. But what we're doing is we're playing it in front of people live. The sign will come crashing down on the dropship. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Master Chief will be chased by brutes, and this is all f***ed up and horrible, but... <laughs> and then all of a sudden, another shadow of a dropship passes over you. And Cortana says, Oh, Lord, look out! Look out! Because it's raining brutes, baby! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Brutes! This is for a scene where the brute jumps down onto the hood of the Warthog, surprising the driver and the Master Chief in the back um, for Joe's demo at E3. We always want to try to put a, you know, a bit of ourselves in the character. Um, it's at least what I'm trying to do with the, with the brute as well. We've been playing around with the idea of characters boarding other vehicles. Um, so here you see a cycle of the brute swatting the driver and the passenger out of the way. It's a pretty rough cycle. It's about 70% complete. Still got a lot more work to put into it. What we are doing now for animation is so much more in depth. We're bringing so much more character to each one of the uh, entities in our game. So creating an environment that is visually compelling and beautiful from all vantage points is such a huge challenge. Look how cool that weapon is. This group of people is is great. I'm some, sometimes pretty awestruck by, you know, how whatever, how smart these people really are and how good decisions that they're really making. Yeah, I'm really proud of those guys. Okay, we should try it. The, just that scene where the chief ejects out the tunnel door now, which was never slow before, is now but slow. But slow. Okay. Right. Everybody here, they work really, really hard, and it doesn't take that, that pressure to get them to jump it up to the next level. Jason, help. I think we should find a different way to do that because the whole f***ing pelican was generating these immense shadow volumes that were sure. filling your screen with this giant f bomb. We are the most cynical people. Like, we are the jaded crowd who, if a game doesn't entertain us in five minutes, we stop playing it. Oh, no. What? This light is, like, world relative, isn't it? Yes. I'm what I had hoped to achieve in about a half hour, now I'm looking at a good night's worth. So yeah, hopefully by tomorrow morning, we'll have something that works. The, the Pelican is so expensive. That's for the shadow cast. The small group of people who, as you work to the very, very end, are gonna sit down and feed off that adrenaline and fix the really nitty-gritty details and ship the really totally polished thing. Oh, that's gotta hurt. There it is. Oh, 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 so easy, but oh no, what's that from What above? is that? It's a new thing. <laughs> We're just throwing everything we can at it. And, you know, Joe keeps uh, pushing for more and more, and then the pro programmers will come through with some spectacular thing, and then the particle effects guy and, will, you know, create something that just looks beautiful, but then the frame rate goes down, and the frame rate goes down, and my music is no longer in sync. Oh, oh. There it is. Huh? Something. Bet you can't stick it. Bet you can't stick it. Oh, you're on. What was that? that was something, something for the fans. I like that. That was that's, the first time I've that's seen for that. the, uh, the little uh, glowy. That's for the really hardcore, name. like German press corps. <laughs> like up to that point, went, oh, you do not oh. believe it's good. And now they're like, wow. <laughs> The most important thing is what comes out of this E3. It's not, for all the business reasons, this is an important moment for retailers in terms of making their decisions on the games they're going to get behind. And it's also really important to the fans. And I think this is a great moment for them to see, you know, what this game really could be like. We've been pretty 
quiet about what we've been doing. Um, so in a lot of ways, I think fans are coming in with no expectations, right? no preconceived notions about what they're going to see. show you Halo 2 today. Uh, this is a... I'm actually going to be playing it as best I can. Um, but before we start, I just need to go over some safety regulations in case of uh, fire or electrical storm or earthquake or something like that. Just be sure that you guys are safe. Smell it, son! These folks didn't wait in line to hear your lips flippity flap. Knuckle up and get ready to dance, you pasty bastard! Yes, sir, Sergeant! <laughs> What you good people are about to see is an operation in progress. This is a real-time feed. No smoke and mirrors, pre-recorded bullshit. <laughs> have made landfall and occupied one of our cities. We will link up with our forces in theater, engage the enemy, and boot their side behinds back into the stratosphere. <laughs> Uh, sir. You got me there? Well, I need to talk about you the... Think so. Kill the lights! <laughs> 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 ah, go, go, go! Take my weapon. You'll need it. Thanks a lot for coming, everybody. Good show. I mean, when I'm watching the demo and you climb up on the cruiser and kick the guy off, I lost it. Master Chief jumped up the uh, ghost, kicked the enemy down and got on it. It was over. It was game over after that. Jumping on the ghost definitely surprised everyone yeah. the first time. I was yeah. like, hey. Because yeah. everybody remembers getting run over by those things. Uh, you blow something up and a guy crawls out and he's still alive, I mean. It doesn't get much better than that as far as I'm concerned. It seemed like a war, like a real battle. I went to see it twice just to make sure that it wasn't the exact same thing, and it was totally different this time. I don't say the word awesome. Usually dude doesn't come out of my mouth, but the truth is, the game is awesome, dude. How the this hell game. are you going to beat this game? Hurry <laughs> <laughs> it up. Let's get it out of here. No, no, you know, we can't wait another year. You know, <laughs> no. I'm sorry. We can't wait. This game has to come out now. Yeah. We spend day in, day out, indoors under fluorescent bulbs, slaving away. This is the first sun we've seen in months. 
if you look, you can see just by our, our, our bulk and our musculature that we're not only top-notch game developers, we're also star athletes. Okay, everyone! Yay, we got our first event drawing for the day! For the Pentathlon! Woo! So the Pentathlon is uh, five, five uh, different sports. We split up into four teams. Grizzled Ancients, which right. are the cool people. Um, it's oh, quite tenure. It's quite tenure. So yeah, how long have you been a bunch of terms which team you're on? Old school, middle school, and newbies. And Grizzled Ancients, of which I am not a Grizzled Ancient. Five events. Tug of War, the old classic that everybody hates, right? right. So you end up with red hands. <laughs> Volleyball, dodgeball, bocce ball, uh, wacky race. Go, 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 go! And Tug of War. Let me tell you the secret to Tug of War. The team with me as the anchor isn't going to win. The team with Michael as the anchor, well, they got a shot. <laughs> the team with Nathan over there as the anchor, they got a real good shot. <laughs> Everybody's got to start with both uh, bum cheeks on the line. Apparently, the, your team is like the flood. You were all one body and one mind. This game is about throwing balls and hitting other people. All right, on three. One, two, three! Pentathlon is non-alcoholic. You appear drunk, and yet you drink root beer. The key to enjoying the <laughs> Pentathlon. Beer. I hate all of you! I hate all the whole thing about you guys! I love you, man. <laughs> well done. Great honor. <laughs> No hug. <laughs> <laughs> Pentathlon for 2003 is officially done. I'm enjoying the sunset, the last sort of rays of light, because uh, the next five months or so, I don't think we're all going to see very much sun. As a matter of fact, I don't think we're going to see any sun at all for the next five or six months, so enjoy it while it lasts. had a vision in our mind about what Halo 2 would look like, and that vision is really easy to see in the Halo 2 announcement trailer. You know, stencil shadows on everything, uh, real-time reflections in the Master Chief's visor, this very crisp, well-wrought image. And we thought, well, that's what we're going to show for E3. And when we got to the actual implementation of some of the choices we had made, we realized that it's impossible. And we went around and around on that and other questions for perhaps too long. I don't think anybody in this world has e ever done anything worthwhile without being their own worst critic. I think that, I mean, especially when you talk about any creative enterprise, if you somehow believe that what you're doing is the greatest thing ever all the time, it's absolutely not gonna be the greatest thing ever. We came back with E3 with actually less than what we wanted to. We came back from E3 with a demo. We did not come back from E3 with a playable part of a level. That was really bad, actually. That wasn't the goal. What E3 gave us was the sense that we still didn't have uh, the target that we were aiming at. So after E3, instead of being able to jump into all of our levels and go right into it, we're still trying to figure out where we're going and what the quality bar is going to be. Because right now, the game is not fun. That is if I have time with all you bastards making me fix things. We've got 50, 60 guys now on the Halo 2 team. They're waiting.
to be told, hey, what do we do? You know, what do we as this massive, smart, talented, hardcore devoted guys that are gonna stay up really late, what, what do we do? Tell us, we wanna do it. I do these land fests like every every six months or so. Some of the people that are showing up are are regulars. There's always new people. It's just Halo ties it all together. All right, hi, I'm Black Star. Yes, Black Star. Uh, the one you know and love. Cyber Freak. Cyber Freak, Cyber Freak. Arizona. Cyber. That's Shishka. I'm Shishka. Nice hey. to meet you all. Uh, Mr. Sacramento. Smiley. Yeah, Mr. Smiley. Brian from Bungie. We got someone yeah. from Bungie here. Yeah, that's right. Whoa. 35, 40 people here, and they're all about Halo, and they all post on these online forums, and they're all like these these internet beings that like we finally get to shake hands with. Oh, oh, they're running across. They're across. They're everywhere. There's like 14 of them inside the base. Right now, we have this game going here, which is 16. Downstairs, I was just down there. They probably by now have at least a 16 game going on. They keep on bringing in more stuff, and it seems to be expanding. We set up 10 Xboxes, actually. That meant 10 TVs or screens of some sort. It turned out we had four LCD projectors. All of the wiring in the house runs into one room and into a pair of switches and then goes out again. All running off my house in the Connecticut suburbs in the winter. Hi, I'd like to place a to-go order, please. It's pretty big. I want 12 large pizzas. There were people willing to spend next month's rent to fly across the country to play in a game at my house. Got the flag, I'm out the front! Oh, that's just oh, playing offense. Oh my! What it comes down to is getting together with people, being able to yell at them, being able to, you know, talk about, oh, it was so great when you killed me with that rocket, I didn't even know it was coming, you know? Shishka's aim is poor on the train! Oh my god. And being able to, like, reflect on the gameplay afterwards. Blue team got the most captures. I got the most kills. So I get one of the prizes. Uh... Dolbeck got most kills, and then Kingpin got one death because he just sat around like a pansy. But if he's watching this, he's a pansy. He knows. <laughs> what do you mean? It's not that his moist thing down here. It's no, like time watching Flash grow. They probably think we're a little strange. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, a, little, a little? A little. It's a hobby Why? like any other, and, and every hobby has its own uh, level of obsession or, or a level of interest. We're a social group getting together. <laughs> Gaming used to be the domain of the geeks, and it's not really anymore. I got the flag. You got it? Oh shit, maybe not. I got it. Are we too old? I got it. Oh, I have to to me. Nah. To Halo 2? To Halo 2. And Bungie. And Bungie. What do I do? I make guns. You get that butt and use it like a pistol and you'll be able to have one in both hands. So you walk around with these two bullet hoses. There's the battle rifle, right? If you're like me, uh, <laughs> it'll be the weapon that you, you fall back on throughout the entire game. Because it's the go-to gun. It'll hopefully actually behave more like a rifle than, uh, than the assault rifle did from, from Halo, which was more of a submachine gun. It suffered from the same things that all video game weapons suffer from, and that is they do not behave like their real, real world counterparts. South Carolina, it was a trip for uh, reference um, to see basically how Marines moved, how they reacted in combat situations, formations. We show up on a farm and we're kind of like, hmm, how serious could these guys actually be? And then we turn the corner and see a table full of guns. Not only one table, but two picnic tables full of guns. Actual military issue service weapons. It ranged from pistols to machine guns, fully automatic silenced. You're talking the deadliest type of guns. 
and these guys were pretty serious. Uh, it was kind of intimidating. Gun comes up, gun bang, doesn't bang. work. And now I'm gonna take up a good shooting position and I'm gonna fall him all the way into the ground. Try to take him down, or just barrel point him like that. During the development now of Halo, stuck. whatever, we made mistakes. We definitely got some criticism from actual people that were in the military. We had a smaller team, right? And, and we had a very short time to make the game. We did a lot of, a lot of research, uh, but there's only so much that books can teach you. Um, you've got to get a lot of research hands on. It isn't very often where you get to see guys who really know what they're doing. And it's full extension. Now you're holding it out here by itself. Being able to stand back and observe brass ejecting from, from the weapon and... The most surprising thing for me was basically the communication between the two-man unit. Moving, move. Touching your partner's back when he's in front of you. Marines going into combat formations, how they'd handle certain situations, how they'd handle multiple opponents, single opponents. We're trying to, to go far and above what we've done in Halo 1. This is our audio playground, which has evolved greatly since the last time. We now have virtually every surface in the game in these large rooms that allow us to kind of mess around and do what we want. Let me show you to one of my favorite rooms, which is the dirt room. Awful lot of dirt in Halo. I could listen to this stuff all day. A voice is a point in space that is creating audio, and that audio gets mixed and then gets put out the speakers. If I turn on one more debug thing here, it'll actually show us how just how many voices are in use for an event like this. So the screen is filled with the amount of sound calls we're getting. And what this is telling us right here is that we have about 17 or 18 voices in use when this chain gun is firing. And we can have 64 unique things happening in, in surround sound space at a time. We almost call it the matrix of doom because the amount of surface types that we have in the game versus the amount of objects that we have in the game colliding with each other and against the environment we will be generating hundreds and indeed thousands of, of sound effects to try to cover up this, this matrix. There's nothing we can't put in the game and all we're waiting for is the assets to go in there for us to tag to them. So we're in good shape, I think. Now ask me again in two months and, and when I'm bloodshot eyes and I haven't bathed in three days and I'll probably tell you something different. So we had a game that was, um, that was nine levels. Um, took us, started at Earth and brought us out into the galaxy and then brought us back to Earth for this grand conclusion. Well, right about at that moment, Pandora's box was opened and decisions which were engraved in stone were rethought. We messed up, like we didn't have the design down, we didn't have the story down. Once we actually started to see how long the missions were taken to to produce and how long they were taking to design and script and it, it just it just wasn't gonna work. And then everything that wasn't essential, all these things that we just loved to see in the game, they all they get put on the bottom of this list and we end up start we start hacking them off. Here comes the knife <laughs> out of the script, what's important, that isn't, you know, goodbye my lovely child. The bungee process of making cool games has worked up until now, but is it possible that there's an amount of pressure or, a, or an ambition that's beyond what we can actually do? I don't know. It's, it's, we haven't finished it yet. These levels behind me, they are commitment. These whiteboards, all they are is commitment. This is what we're going to do. time for constructive feedback is done and it's time to work. Have you paid attention to
to our enemies for one second? I beg your pardon? First of all, that guy, he's not yellow. He's orange. And since when is there a girl on the red team? My favorite thing is pretty dresses. Arr, I got termites in me leg. And that is not a southern accent. Arr. Do you have any tampons? Seriously, what is the matter with you people? At the time we started the series, we thought we were the first people ever to do this. <laughs> we, did. we thought we, we were, we thought we were such original. creative geniuses. Yeah. We made two little five-minute... No, they were about what, two minutes no, back they were about then. Two about minutes. two minutes apiece. Yeah, so. two minutes each, and we put them on the web, and they were just funny little sketches that we wrote, and then we used uh, Halo to animate them. All right, O'Malley, this is it. I got half a mind to kill you, That's ridiculous. and the other half agrees. I think the first week we had 2,000 hits, and then we had, I think, 3,000 hits in a day, as we realized it was kind of starting to take off, and then the next day we had 50,000 hits, and uh, so we started doing a weekly series pretty quickly. This is the M12 LRV. I like to call it the Warthog. A lot of the jokes are just things that you and your buddies would say to each other while you're playing Halo. Why a Warthog, sir? Because M12 LRV is too hard to say in conversation, son. Uh, is Simmons in the can? I'm ready. Okay. Action. Would Electrified be okay? Would Electrified be okay? Hmm. Would Electrified be okay? Great. Well, as you can tell, we are in uh, the old closet for this bedroom out here. You still, we still have the wooden bars where you'd be hanging your clothes. When's it gonna be Simmons' turn? When? When I do the yelling, I hold on to the bars up here where we hang the clothes from. Otherwise, I get a little too excited. That's pretty good, but try to sound like you're reading it off a script. All right, I can do that. Get, get through it a little faster. Okay. Aw, oh, come on, Griff. He was more of a bag than a douchebag. I'm wearing a training bra. I'm wearing a training bra. Try emphasizing I'm. There's a really weird feature in Halo. I won't, I won't call it a bug, out of respect. The position a character is normally in when playing the game, they have their gun up, they're looking around for somebody else going to shoot them, and then as you lower the gun, the character looks down, but at the last minute there, looks back up. And we can make them bob their head to talk, to show who's talking, movement. We can have them turn to face people. Ah, well, looks like Caboose has hurt himself. This is the bug that makes it possible. You know, we, if without this, we couldn't do it. We'll just get his head stuck in the freezer again. It's a beautiful game. I mean, it's, there's, there's still, I don't think there's a better looking game for the Xbox since it's come out. No, I'd, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to keep doing it basically as long as Bungie and the fans will put up with us. We're here today. We're on the 8th of June today. We're roughly halfway towards finishing the project since this went up, so Four weeks from now, we'll have coded everything in the game. Another four weeks from now, we'll have put all of the pieces of content in the game. Two weeks after that, we'll have literally everything, all of the audio, all the cinematics, everything. Then there's six weeks after that where all we do is play it and we fix any bug where we absolutely could not ship it. And then we release it. I'm just kind of scared shitless right now, to be honest with you. Problem is, the bug I have is... The difference between good enough and awesome is, is, is so big. And, I mean, there's this, this, this standard set by everyone here that, I mean, good enough sucks. You can't do good enough. You fire the bullet, and the bullet comes about maybe four or five pixels below where uh, the crosshair says it's going to. It's, it's, a, it's a hard kind of thing to live up to, but it's, uh, I mean, the game's gonna be better for it. We're actually pretty good at slamming stuff in right at the end. As a matter of fact, I think we do some of our best work that way. We're seeing big chunks of the game being, being fun and playable, and so I think, I think that's a huge corner that we've turned. Uh, right now I'm working on polishing the blood splatter decals. <laughs> The bugger evolved into um, this model right here. He has independent little hips, which kind of give him buggery movement, which is cool. We're trying to add certain specific weak points to a banshee, uh, like on the anti-grav pods on the wings. We've got a huge amount of, of work to do in this very, very compressed time period. That's scary. These guys, are everybody here is scared. More time would be well done. CJ doesn't need this until. If we could have some more time, that would be great. But the fans are screaming. 
More time, more time. Yeah, we could have used a lot more time. If you can invent a 75-hour day, you'd be my best friend. We're not asking to work shorter days. We're asking to work as hard as we're working right now, but just two weeks. It's an amazing thing to be part of. That many people want something so bad that they're willing to spend that, you know, that time and that effort seven days a week. It's tremendously hard. It's a cool thing to be part of, and Halo 1 wouldn't have been what it was if we hadn't done that, and this game sure wouldn't be what it is going to be if we had worked eight hours a day, and maybe that sucks because we didn't plan right, and maybe there's a way to do it all on the nine to five schedule, and maybe one day we'll even find that, but it's sure not the way it's going to be this time. We've undertaken this really massive task. I think that we had two or 3,000 lines of unique combat dialogue in Halo 1. And now we're talking more than 14,000 lines of combat dialogue. So the end result is that Marty and I are spending, Marty more than me, a bunch of time in the studio getting a lot of voices. Let's see, fairly robust security algorithms. I could crack them, but sidestep, cover my tracks, and voila, top side hull schematics. See, Jen, you just made like all the dorky techno geeks. Do. <laughs> There's nothing hotter than a woman that can infiltrate top side hull schematics. <laughs> What's it like working with Marty? That's a good question. Joe? Oh, well, I mean, it's the best. Working with Marty is an effort in patience and restraint. He's hilarious, he's funny, he's sharp. He gets to bitch like nobody's business about how much work he has and how little time there is. We work together really well. He's The two of us together are the most unlikely couple for a variety of reasons. He, um, I hate him, actually. <laughs> Chief, whatever you're going to do, make it quick. I think Cort Cortana might just be genuinely... Basically, well, all you want to do is say, louder, faster, now you're sad. But Joe is like, well, you see, back in the first centuries of space flight, the Covenant... So right, the Covenant fleet, which arrived at Earth, is now attacking. There's and an engine core, and if we destroy the reactor, the power's the core of the ship. Appearing. Actually, I can see the actor's eyes start to glaze over. They have no idea what that means. So they'll say, so you want it faster? And then I'll go, yeah, faster. <laughs> I'd say Marty's direction is incredibly intuitive. Sometimes, and, and, and I'm smiling even as I say it, I don't know what I'm going to say, but Marty does, and he's already written out exactly as I'm going to say it. Oh, pods, coming in. <laughs> we lost. It's raining aliens. <laughs> oh, Jesus, why you do this to me? <laughs> aliens everywhere. <laughs> Number one, you want to have someone who gets it, who, if they've, especially if they've played the game or if they're really good actors and they've improvised a lot. That's the kind of performance we're looking for. I just don't want the actor to blow through the page and give me exactly what I want. I want the actor to go through the page, give me what I want, be inspired, and then launch off into some crazy realm. Hello, I am 343 Guilty Spark. I am the monitor of Installation 04. This will save me from the storm but you will be consumed. The universe is full of cold, hard facts, and this is one of them. Chief, we've got a problem. The boarding craft from the Malta and the Athens are converging on us. The moment of salvation is at hand. Forward, warriors, and fear not pain or death. I shall light this holy ring, release its cleansing flame, and burn a path into the divine beyond. <clears throat> This place is falling apart. Kill me or release me, Parasite. But do not waste my time with talk. I need a weapon. This is not your grave. <laughs> but you are welcome in it. Kill the other. I have come to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take my foot so far up your ass, you'll be talking shit for weeks. Good golly, Miss Molly! Have you? Hundred and ten. <laughs> Turrets wasted. Oh, denied. Hoorah. Hoorah. I love holding these highlighters. <laughs> <laughs> the hopes of all the Covenant rest on your shoulders, Chieftain. 
that was really wonderful to see these actors come in who we really didn't know what was going to happen with them and they they worked really, really hard and they did a really great job. Works for us and away we go. Wee! If only Marty would work that hard, we'd be set. Be a tut. Be a pop. There's always a point like when I'm all by myself composing, and this just happened like within the last 24 hours, where I'm thinking, is this anything? Is this idea gonna be interesting to anybody? You have these whole series of self-doubts, and then there comes a point where I get over the hump. Like I add some instrument or I play some melody, and it's like, oh, oh okay, that's what this was meant to be. If I'm involved in the development of the game and I actually enjoy the game and I'm talking with Joe and I'm talking with Tyson, I'm understanding emotionally what they're trying to do, then my product will be better because I'm that deeply involved in it. Marty's pretty amazing. Marty makes uh, pretty much everything we do twice as good and that makes me really angry because he's just about the only individual who has that level of contribution to the team, but I would never say that to him. But it's really nice to see something which needed an epic effort to put it together and make it really great sort of coming together now. We're at a stage in the game development where a lot of things that were broken or unfinished are really coming together. It certainly wiped out all my expectations. I was hoping for Halo 1.5 or 6, you know, and a few new features, a couple of new weapons, but just seeing how it's exploding, it's, it's really incredible. It's really great to have this deadline that we can't move at all because it forces us to kind of finish it. When the producers come over and pry our hands from the keyboard and say, OK, you can't touch it anymore. We, we've got to start manufacturing these discs. I think that's the point where we're going to have to stop, and that's going to be the end of it. People are like, god damn, like, it's so cool to fight the hunter, except then this grunt guy came over. And wouldn't it be cool like if he could jump up on the hunter's back and do this or that or, you know, whatever. And you're like, let's go do it. It feels to me like the excitement is coming back. Getting the missions together is, is pretty huge. It's something that people haven't seen for three years. All the designers are here, programmers are here, environment artists seem like they haven't gone home since about April anyway, so I think everybody's kept focused, and I, I think that's, that's something that's really important. We're seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel, so that's good. There's glorious, bright light at the end of the tunnel. I see the light, it's this little pinprick, but it's coming fast. I'm married to the guy who actually got to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and he says it's glorious. <laughs> Every day I see something brand new that oh, it blows me away. I'm like, gosh, how did you guys do that? It's really neat stuff. It excites me, makes me do better work, makes all these other guys do better work. They're really excited about it. Jason has this phrase that he uses for how things come together at the end, and it, he says that it's like assembling a cathedral out of a hurricane. We scale each of these three factors by a different value. The best part of working Halo 1 was at the end when the game was done, you 
you come in and play the game, and you know, you, that's your work. You come in and you actually beta test the game. And I'll just tell him that I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to see all the work that we've done, put it in the game and play it at the end of the game. It's just, it's gonna be awesome. I would describe it as barely pulling out of the dive in time to make a perfect three-point landing. And I think we're, we're every, every, if the plane holds together, we're gonna land it okay. I'm often amazed by the shit that we can pull off. This group of people is, is great. Well, I think you... It's about believing you're the best and that there's nothing that you can't overcome. Um, it's about showing everybody else that you're, that you rule the world. And uh, it's also about having fun. I mean, as hard as it gets, it's still the best job in the world. Come on. All right, stick together. Right now. Oh, it went up top. <laughs> 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 kind of a uh, little bit. I like to think of it as jumping out of an airplane with some silkworms and a needle and having to make your parachute on the way down. Um, it always comes together right at the very end. So far, there's always this thing that happens at the end where all these disparate pieces come together and make this glorious game. And to a certain extent, you just have to keep your hands on the keyboard like it's a steering wheel of a race car and type really quickly as all this stuff falls into the hopper because very quickly what's going to come out the other side is, I think, something which is really good. We're not sure yet, but it's looking, it's looking like it's going to be good. We've got a problem. I will continue my campaign against the humans. Warriors, prepare for combat. 30 seconds out. Stand by to... Whoa.